Trains. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Dino Springs Train Station. Today, we're going to learn all about trains. Have you ever been on a train? Trains are so amazing because they can take people and things to different places near and far. Trains run on railroad tracks. The railroad track gives the train's wheels something to roll on, so the ride is smooth and the train doesn't go off path. Did you know that the first steam train to ever carry people was called Locomotion Number 1? It was made in 1825. That's a long time ago. It was powered by burning coal to create steam. I can't wait to go on our brachiotastic train ride. I've brought some delicious snacks for our journey. This train station sure is beautiful. I think I could plant some flowers here to make it even better. As wonderful as that sounds, I'm uncertain we can just plant flowers anywhere we want. I think I hear our train coming. Oh, wow! This train is so big and loud. It needs to be big so that many people can ride inside it. Maybe we can discover the different parts of the train. Splendid idea, Barkley. Let's begin at the front of the train. This is the engine. The engine is the part that pulls the train. It's like the leader of the train. Right, and the part that comes after the engine are called the cars. That's where the passengers sit. At the end of the train, we have the caboose. It's like a little house where the conductor stays. The conductor makes sure everything on the train is safe, checks the passengers' tickets, and also lets everyone know about the upcoming stops. There are also different kinds of trains. Passenger trains and freight trains. A passenger train transports people. Or dinos like us. And a freight train transports things like cattle, food, or lumber. Did you know that some trains can move above the ground? These trains are sometimes called L trains. And some trains can move underground. These trains are called subways. Staggerific! But now it's time for us to board our train. See you at our destination. Count by twos. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dino Springs. We're going to be doing something amazing at Milo's lab today. He's creating a brand new invention, and he needs our help to finish it. What kind of invention is Milo making? I don't know. He's been very secretive about it. But whatever it is, I'm sure it'll be Tyrant amazing. Will you join us to help Milo finish his invention? Stegorific. Let's head inside. You're here! Ah! How did he? Barkley, why do you keep scaring me like that? I'm sorry, Milo. I just got a little too excited to see Tessa and Ollie. Hello, my friend Asauruses. What are you making, Milo? I will show you. But first, I need your help in assembling it. We're always ready to help, Milo. Excellent. There are several steps to this process. First, we need to press all the green buttons on that panel over there. Oh, oh, oh! That sounds like a job for Barkley. Okay, let me see. All the buttons have numbers on them. And it always goes red, green, red, green. If we count all the numbers, we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But if we just count the green buttons, we skip one number. Let's count just the green buttons together. Two, 
four, six, eight, ten. Let's do it one more time. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Hey, we just counted by twos. Brachiotastic. All right, Milo, we're all done with the green buttons. Splendid. Now, I'm going to need some help putting these memory modules into the device. In order for it to work, we have to put in two modules at the same time until there's 14 of them. That sounds like a job for me and Tessa. Tyrant amazing! Let's count how many modules we're putting into the device so we know when to stop. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Wow, we just counted by twos each time we added two modules. Let's double check to make sure we counted to fourteen. Two. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Staggerific! There's only one more step left. We need to put twenty socks into this bin. Socks? That's so strange, Milo. What kind of invention is this? You'll find out very soon. Let's see. Each pair of socks comes in two. One, two. And if we count by twos, we can get to 20 much faster. Tyrant amazing! Let's do it! Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. One more time! Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, 14, 16, 18, 20. Bravo! I hereby present to you the Sock Coloring Machine 2000. It takes all of your white socks and transforms them into much more colorful versions. Hmm. My washing machine already does that. I think it's a Tyrant amazing invention, Milo. The Planet Mars Hello, my friends! Barkley the Brachiotastic Brachiosaurus here! Ollie and I are about to visit Milo in his lab. We'll be going on an amazing space journey today! Have you ever wanted to travel to another planet? To travel there by a spaceship would take a very long time because even our closest planets are very far away. But fear not, Milo's incredible invention, the Milotron, will show us what these planets look like. We won't even need our spacesuits. Unless we want to, of course. Let's head inside. My friend Asauruses! You're here just in time! Stegorific! What are we exploring today? We will be exploring the planet Mars. Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun and is Earth's neighbor. I'm so excited to see what's on Mars! Maybe we'll find chocolate! Doubtful, my friend. All right, let's begin. Milotron, commence holographic module for the planet Mars. Activating hologram module for the planet Mars. Tyrant amazing! This planet is such a lovely red color. Mars is also known as the red planet. It's red because the iron in the rocks has turned red, the same way the metal on a rusty old bicycle turns red. Let's see what's over here. Whoa! Did you see that? I just jumped super high! I have simulated the gravity of Mars. Gravity 
is what pulls us towards the ground where we stand. Mars has lower gravity, and lower gravity means you will be able to jump higher. Brachiotastic! What's that vehicle over there? Oh, Diddy, that is a Mars rover. This one is named Perseverance. It was sent here by humans to explore and collect data. It also takes fantastic pictures. Say cheese! We are now at Olympus Mons, the largest volcano in our solar system. Wow! How tall is it? It is three times as tall as the tallest mountain on Earth. Stegorific! Did you know that Mars also has one of the largest canyons in the solar system called Valles Marineris? Tyrant amazing! I'm so impressed! Thanks, Milo and Milotron for taking us to Mars. Even though I didn't find any chocolate here, I still had a brachiotastic time. Miles T. Pteranodon is always at your service. I'm glad we could learn and explore together. Who knows where we'll go next? I vote for a trip to Saturn's rings. The letter B. Greetings, my friends. Today, Wizard Fest has arrived in Dino Springs, and we will be going on a quest to find the elusive magic treasure chest that the Dragon Wizard has hidden away. Oh, Diddy! Brachiotastic! I can't wait to see what's inside this treasure chest! Not so fast, my friend Asaurus! First, we have to solve all of the Dragon Wizard's puzzles! It won't be easy! But I know we can do it if we work together. Let's go. The first puzzle looks to be a riddle. Allow me to read it. Ahem. This is a letter that can be found. It sounds like a creature that flies all around. Flower to flower, it never rests. Say the letter to pass the test. What letter could it be? Flowers! I know this one! The creature that flies from flower to flower is a bee! Which sounds like one of the letters from the alphabet. The answer is the letter B! The letter B is the second letter in the alphabet. The sound that it makes is B. Let's keep exploring! Uppercase and lowercase. Write letter B's within this space. Friendosauruses! I think we're supposed to use these magic wands to write an uppercase letter B and a lowercase letter B into this stone wall. First, let's do uppercase. We draw a line down like this. And then from the top, we draw two half circles like this. And now, lowercase. We start up at the top and draw a line straight down, like this. Then, a circle at the bottom, and we're all finished. Look, everyone! It's the Dragon Wizard! Dino friends! Your journey is almost at its end. The final task you must complete. Place only items that start with B into the cauldron. You'll reveal the treasure chest becomes unsealed. Tyrant amazing. Our final task is to put everything that starts with the letter B into this cauldron. Let's see. What do we have here? There's a ball, an apple, a book, a hat, a cookie, and a boat. Which of these things has a B sound and starts with the letter B? Ball starts with the letter B. Let's put it in. Book also starts with the letter B. The last thing that starts with the letter B is this boat. 
In you go. Amazing work. Now I see. You've passed the quest of letter B. Now I present you the reward, the treasure you've been searching for. Diddy, what's inside? It's bananas, blueberries, and balloons. This quest was so much fun, but there's just one more thing I'd like to say that starts with B. Brachiotastic. Sleeping. Day in Dino Springs Campgrounds. But now it's time to get in our sleeping bags and catch some Z's. Z's? Why Z's? Can't we just catch some A's or B's? Oh, Barkley, catching Z's is just a way of saying sleep. We need to sleep to grow big and tall, just like our ancestors did. Yes, sleep helps our brains stay sharp so we can remember things really well. And it helps our bodies feel stronger after a long day of activities. This then helps us to not get sick as often and to fight off sickness faster if we do. And don't forget, sleep also keeps us from feeling grumpy. That's right, sleep is super important, but sometimes it's hard to get to sleep. Anybody have any ideas to help us sleep better? Well, how about counting sheep? One, two, three. Whoops, I counted cookies instead. That brings up a good point, Barkley. We shouldn't eat too much sweet things before bed because it can make it hard to sleep. The best way to have a good night's sleep is to go to bed at the same time every night and wake up at the same time every day. It's helpful to do something relaxing right before sleeping, like reading a book or taking a warm bath. Also, looking at televisions, computers or phones can make it hard to sleep, so be sure to stay away from those before bedtime. Lastly, if there's anything that worries, or scares you about going to sleep at night, make sure you talk to a trusted grown-up during the day to help you with it. Tyrant amazing advice, friend of sources. Oh, oh, oh! Before we sleep, I have a bedtime story for us all. Staggerific! Once, a Brachiosaurus named Barkley loved baking cookies. But he ate too many cookies before bedtime. And his tummy rumbled so loud that it woke up the whole island. Moral of the story, eat cookies earlier. Oh, Diddy, now I feel sleepy. And I'm ready to dream of a beautiful garden with blooming flowers. Let's put out the campfire. Remember, friends, sleep well and have staggerific dreams. Australia. Hello, friends. Welcome to Milo's Lab. Today, we're embarking on a wild adventure to the land down under, Australia. Australia is a country and a continent in the southern part of the world. Milo's incredible Milotron will take us there I can't wait to see the unique plants and flowers that Australia has to offer. My garden will be blooming with new ideas. Maybe we'll see a giant crocodile. Crocodile? I'm not sure I'd like that. No worries, Milo. We'll stick together and make sure everything goes staggerific. Besides, isn't everything a hologram? Yes, of course. Ahem. Milotron? Commence Hologram Module for Australia. Hologram Module for Australia. Commencing. We have now arrived in Sydney, the largest city in Australia. Look at that big shell. 
Now I'm thinking of having seafood pasta for lunch. That's the Sydney Opera House. It's a famous landmark where people go to watch plays and listen to music. It's a gigantic theater that took 14 years to build. What a lovely theater. I just hope they don't mistake us for part of the show. We'll just enjoy the sights today and give a staggerific dinosaur dance performance the next time we visit. Next destination, Great Barrier Reef. Look at all the colors. It's like a giant underwater garden. This is a coral reef. It's home to countless fish and other sea creatures. Did you know that the Great Barrier Reef is the largest living organism in the world? That's right, Milo. It's an organism because the reef is made of billions of tiny animals known as coral polyps. Many animals call this their home. Look at this colorful clownfish. The Great Barrier Reef is a very important part of our ecosystem. And without it, all these animals would disappear. We'll make sure to spread the word about protecting our oceans, just like we protect Dino Springs. We are now at the Uluru Rock Formation in the heart of Australia's outback. Brachiotastic! It's so breathtaking! Uluru is a sacred site for the indigenous people who have lived here for thousands of years. You can even see their ancient rock paintings from 5,000 years ago. Uluru is also home to many animals and plant species, including the red kangaroo and a lizard known as the thorny devil. We're grateful to learn about you, Uluru. Your history is as tyrant-amazing as the dinosaurs. We may be dinosaurs, but we're also explorers, learners, and protectors of the Earth. Bald Eagles. Good morning, friends. Today, we're going for a wonderful hike up Dino Peak. The views around Dino Peak are so beautiful. I wonder what fascinating creatures we'll run into today. Regardless of what creature, I have ensured that we'll be ready to view them from the ground or sky. Sky? But some of us can't fly. Did you hear that? That, my friend of sources, is the sound of a bald eagle. A large bird of prey that lives in North American forested areas near water. Maybe we can get a closer look at the bald eagle near the river up ahead. Look at all the fish in this river. Bald eagles love to feast on fish, but not just fish. It also eats small mammals and even other birds. It has amazing eyes, which can see prey from really far away. It can see four to five times farther than a human. When hunting, it swoops down from the sky and uses the sharp talons on its feet to help catch their prey. Here it comes! Wow! That was tyrant amazing! It looks like our eagle friend is leaving us. Goodbye, Mr. Bald Eagle! Not so fast, Barkley. I may have a solution for us. What are these? These are my latest invention, the Milopod. Just hop on and we can follow our eagle friend up into the sky. Staggerific! Let's go! Whee! What a brachiotastic way to travel, Milo! Let's try to keep up. Bald eagles normally fly 20 to 40 miles per hour with their incredible seven-foot wingspan. As you can see, the bald eagle isn't actually bald. Its name comes from the word piebald, which means spotty or patchy. Friend of sources, the bald eagle has landed in its nest. 
It looks like it's protecting something. Look inside the nest. It's protecting its babies. Baby eagles are called eaglets, and they're a different color than the grown-ups. Bald eagles are also monogamous, which means they're devoted to one partner for their entire life. The nests that they build are called eyries. They're made from many sticks, and the cracks are filled with softer things like grass and moss. The largest bald eagle nest ever found weighed two tons. That's heavier than most cars. In fact, the bald eagle builds the largest tree nest out of any animal in the world. I've gained a new appreciation for the majestic bald eagle. Isn't our world filled with so much natural wonder? Let's continue to do our part in taking good care of our planet so animals like the bald eagle can continue to amaze us. Robots. Terrific episode of Robo Dino. Robo Dino sure is one brachiotastic robot. Too bad robots like Robo Dino aren't real. Robo Dino may not be real, but there are other robots in this world that are just as amazing. What do you mean? Well, I know that our friend Milo has been working on his own special robot. Maybe we can stop by at his lab and see for ourselves. That sounds like a brachiotastic idea. How's your new creation coming along, Milo? I'm almost finished. Just a few adjustments here and here. Hey, Milo! Ah! Barkley, never scare a pteranodon while they're working in their lab. I'm sorry, Milo. Ollie mentioned that you had an amazing invention to show us. I most certainly do. Behold, my friends, I present to you the Helper Friend 2000. Wow, Milo. It's interesting. But it doesn't look anything like how Robo Dino looks. That's because robots come in all shapes and sizes. Some look like humans, but others are built to do specific things. There are robots that explore space, clean floors, and even help doctors with surgery. That's brachiotastic! But what does your robot do? Does it cook pancakes? Well, Parkley, I didn't design Helper Friend 2000 specifically to cook pancakes. But allow me to turn it on, and I can show you what it does. Oh, Diddy. It needs a bit more time to charge up. It's okay, Milo. We know that once it's running, it'll be a tyrannizing robot. While we wait, perhaps Milotron can teach us a thing or two about robots. Staggerific! Milotron, commence education module for robots. Robot education module commencing. Let's start from the beginning, shall we? The first robot ever created was named Unimate. It was created in 1959 and helped with dangerous tasks in factories. It had strong arms that could lift heavy things. Since then, robots have been designed to assist us in all sorts of tasks. So robots can do things that we find difficult? Precisely, Tessa. How do robots work? Robots have three main components. Sensors, processors, and actuators. Sensors gather information from their environment, kind of like our eyes and ears. Processors are similar to our brains and make decisions based on that information. Finally, actuators are like the robot's arms and legs, allowing it to move. Robots follow instructions called code that tells them what to do. Can you tell us about any famous robots that exist today? Affirmative. One of the most famous robots is 
Atlas, designed by Boston Dynamics. It's a humanoid robot that can walk, jump, and even do backflips. I can't wait to have my own robot friend. Well, maybe one day, Barkley. The future of robotics is full of possibilities. Robots are becoming smarter and more helpful every day. Imagine one day having a robot friend to talk to, play games, and help you with your everyday tasks. I look forward to the day when a robot will help me take care of my garden. I think Helper Friend 2000 is done charging. Oh, Diddy, allow me to activate it. What are those noises? It's music. The Helper Friend 2000 is a music creation robot. It will revolutionize our lives as it sings its lovely melody to help and encourage us throughout the day. That's wonderful, Milo. Thank you for creating this amazing invention. Maybe it can help us write a song about robots. Thanks for digging into knowledge with Ollie Dinosaur. Be sure to check out our other videos with more coming soon. Have a stegorific day.